All right. Good morning. Welcome to 59 Minutes. My name is Levi Kones. We are going to be talking about insurance today, discussing the topic of crisis in the healthcare cost. To join me in doing that is Paul Kasemba and Lillian Quimba, who are the Managing Director and the Executive Director from the Royal Associates Insurance Brokers Limited. Karibuni sana. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank allowing you. us to grace uh, ourselves in your lovely compound here. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Let me start, uh, Paul. Um, um, just when we talk insurance, generally people imagine that insurance is for the elite. Let's just debunk that first. Is insurance for the elite? No, I said no. Insurance is not for elite. Everybody can afford insurance. The issue of perception, the issue of mindset, it's possible. Everybody can be insured. Everybody can afford insurance bills. And as you go further, you're going to, I'm going to show you why. But every family, every person can be able to buy insurance for themselves, for their properties and everything. It's so affordable. It is uh, a perception that was created, yeah. that insurance for the elite. Yeah. Lillian, you're a customer. You're actually a customer service guru. Yeah. What would you say to that? Okay, insurance is actually a necessity. And everybody needs insurance. Now, if you look at it, take, for example, um, the elite and the other side. We all live in houses. We need our houses to be protected. If my house, as an elite, catches fire, I'll feel the pain the same way the person who is on the other side will also feel the same pain. If I get sick, I'll still see the same doctor that this other person is seeing. Absolutely. But the only difference is maybe the elite may have, organ if they have the money, they may have uh, taken a, maybe a advantage of the money and taken a proper cover if they were willing to do that and if they, somebody had talked to them about the insurance uh, for medical, for healthcare. And maybe the other side, it might have been expensive and maybe somebody may not have bought. But the truth of the matter is, it is a necessity for all of us. We go through the same life circles. So you cannot say that uh, it is for the elite and not for the people who are less privileged. Everybody is entitled, everybody. It's actually a necessity for everybody. So let's go, up, go back a bit. Paul, take us a bit uh, into a bit of your history with insurance. How long now and uh, how has the journey been? I've done insurance for many years. Like I was saying earlier, uh, you know, when I talk about the years that I've interacted with insurance, probably 30 years, I've interacted with insurance for 30 years. Yeah, I've yeah. done insurance for 30 years. I've, I've, I've been in the top management for many, you know, the company that I've worked with. I started with the insurance company. I went to a blue chip insurance broker. I went to another blue chip insurance broker. I went to another one. I don't know what to call it a blue chip, but it was a top broker. And I, was, I, was, I was a GM. I was in charge of the insurance. So yes, and then we started Royal Associates. So basically I can say, yes, I've been, I've been directed with insurance for many years. Yeah. I'll tell you, look, I, I, I drink insurance. I eat insurance. I breathe insurance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, yes, I, I, I qualified as uh, the youngest SEI, which is the Associate Insurance Institute of London, the youngest and the best qualifier. When I was qualified, I was very, uh, I was very young. And in terms of uh, the grains and everything, I tried to be the best globally, the best SEI qualifier and the youngest SEI qualifier. So this has been your life? It's been my life. That's what I do. Has it always been yours, years. Lillian? Sure. Um, I started insurance immediately after school. Of course, with one of the blue chip companies, and I received all the training that it takes. I have worked with um, another blue chip company um, and another one. And then finally, when we f saw the urge that we needed to give more than what we were giving, is when Royal Associates was born. So when, yeah, when Royal Associates was born, because people say when people start something, it's because they see uh, a gap that they need maybe to to get in and fill. Now, you guys have been in insurance for long. Then you mm. came together and started uh, this company. What were you, what was the... The, the, the reason when, why... Yes. Now, I'll tell you, even as our name talks about, you know, suggest we are Royal Associates. So we saw what was happening in the insurance industry because I've been there for many years, and I've been there for many years. We realized that there are lots of guns, a pain that our customers go through. I mean, go to the top insurance brokers, top insurance companies are good to find their gap that runs across the board. And this is, you know, you get an insurance today, I mean, your customer buy an insurance. And then what happens, the next time you're going to see the person, the insurance person, is when they are doing the renewal. 
or the next time we're going to hear about them is when you have a claim. And then you find that you're on your own in terms of claims full up, in terms of advice, in terms of what the customer is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So we came in, you know, when we started all our sessions, we say that we need to be different because, of course, we're joining a very crowded uh, market. market yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we decided let's be different. And we said we are going to be different in this way. We are going to understand the customer needs, the pain that they've gone. But by the way, I'll tell you what, huh? today, if I go to a forum and I'm talking insurance, people will not even want to hear about me. They want to hear about the bank. They want to hear about other services, but not insurance. Because majority of the customers have been let down by us. I mean, today you are coming to me. I'm giving insurance. I'm very excited and enthusiastic when I'm selling insurance to you. But immediately after that, I disappear. Why? Because I get a commission, my commission. And that's it. Yeah. So we came and said, look, we need to be able to, we need to find a space for ourselves. Yeah. We need to get a space for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the space is we need to look at the pains of the client that we've handled all the years. The gen has that many years as a broker, that yes. many years as a broker. Yeah. And we knew there's a line that was running across. There are clients that have suffered a lot. The people don't have confidence. Because you bought your car insurance with me, and that time I was there. By the time you have a claim. So you wanted to develop a relationship? Yes. No, we, we wanted to go further and get involved. Mm -hmm. We wanted to get involved in the claims process. We wanted to involve, get involved in the risk process. The insurance is risk. Yeah. So we wanted to mm -hmm. partner with the client to ensure that the client is a partner. And every time we're talking about the development, the things that happen. And when a claim happens, we get involved completely. I don't want my client to come and look today. I, I've met many clients. And you go to them and say that I don't trust insurance. Why is that so? Because I placed a claim one year ago or two years ago, and the claim won't be sorted out. Mm -hmm. Then you ask your intermediary why, or rather, you know, your insurance person, why the claim taken long? A year because of documentation? They'll give an excuse. I mean, you're going to give, we are going to give an excuse. You've not given one, two, three, four, five things. Documentation. Yeah. You know. probably the client doesn't even know what to give. Mm -hmm. The client doesn't understand insurance. Insurance is technical. So that's why we discussed and said, yeah. let's go and bridge the gap. Let's offer the client the service that is missing out there. In terms of today, you have a car insurance. I'll get involved from the point of the where you are, and I'll give you proper advice, and I'll work with you all the way. I will never give an, an, an excuse of documentation because you are professionals. Yeah. We're not give, we are going to give um, you know, a reason, reasons. And there are many reasons that people give insurance. So we said, instead you are going to give results instead of reasons. And, and trust me, the clients that you work with, the clients that you work with, they've grown because of that. Because majority of the time, today a client calls me at midnight. I've had a breakdown. My car is broken down in in, in uh, Uruwewe. I will leave, go, that night, give personalized attention, and I will, I, I will facilitate the vehicle being told to the police station or the client. Mm. I just so work with the client. The yeah. Results instead of results. And then also, yeah. in when you talk about documentation, I'll tell the client, this document you're being asked because of one, two, three, four, five. And generally the clients you fear, to do the documents because you know the small print. I don't want to give this document, I don't give this statement, I don't give this document because it's going to be turned against me. So we work with our clients. The reason why they're asking for claim form, they want to capture all the details that comes of the accident. Right? Right. So we work with the client all through the journey. And we tell the reason why they are being asked one, two, three, four. I hear you. Lilian, would you like to add something to that? Yes, of course. Um, and even having um, seen the pains that a lot of people have gone through and having come up with a dream to make a difference, we have actually grown um, tremendously because of the referrals that our clients have given us. Our clients have given us quite, have really supported us because we have been there for them. Actually, we normally say we are 24-8 because we are there to work with our clients, to advise our clients, to, to, you know, to educate them on matters insurance. Insurance is a bit technical, not many people understand. So we are the eyes of the clients when it comes to insurance. Our role really is to stand in the gap 
and to make sure that we manage their risks on their behalf. Yeah. So that is how we have managed to grow to where we are within a very short time. I hear you. Now, you know, um, um, and before even I, we talk about your packages or anything, a lot of people have, and, uh, have had issues, especially in terms of uh, medical insurance. Yes. And not too many of us are insured in this country. And, and uh, it's not uh, uncommon to see a harambe for this or that or the other with no insurance whatsoever. W what advice would you, would you give the Kenyan watching you on matters of insurance, especially to do with themselves, who says maybe it's out of reach for me to be able to access a big hospital? Now, um, my first advice, your health is your personal responsibility. And I keep telling people, I'll keep saying that, I'll keep repeating your health is your personal responsibility. Don't wait for somebody to think about where you'll go for treatment. Don't wait for the community or your family to dictate which doctor will take, after you, will take care of you when you are sick. Make a decision. Health is not expensive. Health insurance is not expensive. It's just that uh, we as the insurance uh, sector, we may have taken a bit of time to reach out to the people, to the deserving uh, uh, population. But we as Royal Associates, we are here to demystify that whole thinking. We want to tell everybody, we want to tell the general population that anybody can access insurance, anybody can access healthcare insurance, and you don't need to die because you are not able to go to the hospital of your uh, choice. You don't need to, you know, to, to, to rely on people you know, every other day you wake up and you have, you've been added to a WhatsApp group. Maybe you know this person or a friend of yours has added you asking you to support. There are places where halls are packed every day with people raising funds for hospital bills. So what we're telling people, let us plan our lives. Let us plan ourselves in good time. Because at some point, everybody gets sick. At some point, you will incur medical uh, bills. And to make it easier for you so that it is, uh, you know, you, it's not a burden to people and to your family. Long gone are the days when we used to live like a community where you could sit and you're like, I don't care. If I get sick, my family is going to take care of me. My mother will do it. My father will do it. My brothers and sisters, they will not let me rot in hospital. They will take care of it. Long gone are those days. That's not the society. Right now, everybody is minding their own business. Even your own brother. You are not his business. Your own brother has his own issues. He has his family to take care of. Your own sister. They'll come in. They'll say, sorry, oh, what have you? They'll open a WhatsApp page and they raise kidogo, kidogo. They'll take you to the hospital, which will be dictated by the funds they have raised. What we are telling you, plan yourself. Go for treatment where you'd love to go. There is nothing as exciting as when you go to a facility that is well taken care of, that is clean, that has staff that are, you know, that, that are powered and they are fired and they are ready to take care of you. You know, you get well even before the doctor comes. Because of the care, you have been taken care of. Why? Because these people, they are working in a good institution that has been, that has trained, they have been trained to work in a proper institution to provide proper services. They know how to do their thing. So everybody wants to be taken care of like that. When you know they come around you, you get well. You don't want to go to a struggling institution because you are not able to afford where real treatment is found. Yeah. So my take is insurance is here with us. Insurance is accessible. We are here to tell the Kenyans. Insurance is very accessible. Insurance is around us. It's, it's easy. It's cheap. You can afford it. Even with a little money, you can. In fact, if you divide, if if you go down, Paul, by looking at uh, how much you can pay, if you go break it down, even per week or per day, you'll find it will cost like about how much per day? A thousand shillings. A thousand, even less per month. Imagine per month. Per month, yeah, maybe one thousand in a whole month. So if you add all that together, you actually can afford medical healthcare insurance, proper healthcare insurance. And I keep telling people, please let's not leave our next of kin or our family people to die because they were not able to access healthcare insurance. And if you're hearing me wherever you are, 
and you let your family or your next of kin suffer because you have not taken the initiative, please, it is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to know that anybody associated with you, anybody in your WhatsApp group, anybody, any person in your phone, contact phone list, your relatives, your parents, you need to be the ambassador. I like that. Paul, do you think it's time for like a mental uh, mind change? Because, you know, sometimes we can have... Uh, family parties and we buy our Azaya's gifts and stuff. What if I'll you, tell you my brother, give them insurance for a year? It's is a, is, is a issue. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you know, a few years back, we've, we've always relied on our family. If you have to marry, yeah. you call your friends, <laughs> relatives, and <laughs> 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 check out money for you. Want to, get the to buy your wife. <laughs> <laughs> It was uh, pre wedding. A pre wedding. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Some <laughs> later on, it was <laughs> baptized. <laughs> it was baptized to goat eating. Goat yeah. eating. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, our society has always, I mean, we came up with that Arambe thing that the society was was ready to really take care of ourselves. Yes. You know, if you want uh, if you want a son to go to the UK for studies, you call the Arambe society. Yes. And the society were more willing to come and support. Yes. You want to buy a wife? That's why I was ready to do it. <laughs> then it got to medical health care. Yeah. So today you find, I'll tell you, like my phone today, yeah. <laughs> I've got about five, five groups yeah. that I need to really contribute for. Contribute for. For, for, yeah. for, for quality health care. I was somebody, laughing. The other day I was putting one for somebody's <laughs> wife's PhD. Absolutely. And I was like... PhD. Uh, look, I'll tell That's you what. That's where we are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's his wife. <laughs> but you know now, today, I'll tell you what, not many people are willing to... <laughs> Not many people are willing to, to really get involved in the Rambe for the, for the education. No, why? I mean, your son, your daughter, they also need to go to the UK. Yes. So why would I want to check over my... <laughs> for, for my neighbor. <laughs> so, really, so the school thing was really... I, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised uh, if there are people still want to check up for, for education. And I'm, 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 uh, weddings also. Personally, I'm married. And I told my friends, look, when I got married, why are you calling for Arambe? <laughs> so Arambe, I will not get involved for, for wedding. <laughs> then it came to the healthcare. In as much as I want to do it, I, I mean, I've got so many responsibilities. And, and look, I'll just send about 200, 500, 1,000 to help because I've got people in my circle who also need to be helped. To, to healthcare. Yes. I mean, because there's a crisis. Yes. Somebody over to India, I've got I mean, so many people who want quality healthcare attention. That's everything. So, not that I want to do it, not that I want to give a thousand, I want to give more. Yeah. But because there are many the of them, you get the point. Right? You have so much. Yes. Absolutely. So, yeah, to contribute it's, for. It's a crisis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I think it's so born from the society thing. Mm -hmm. The society will be there for me. If anything happens, the society will be there for me. Yes. And that's why today, I'll tell you, tell your friends, you're buying insurance for your car, your car insurance. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you buy, you pay maybe under thousand. 70,000 to buy your car insurance. What does that mean? That if my car has got a problem, yeah. or sick, or somewhere, I mean, no accident. Mm. I can talk my car to, to, to the garage directly because I'll give a, I mean, the, 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 the insurance company yes. will facilitate that. Yeah. But then when it comes to you having an accident or getting sick, I want to rely on the community, the society. Actually, as the car is being repaired, they have opened our tab group. No, 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 no. You know, it's so much. So I think it's a case of change, changing your mindset mm -hmm. and realize like what Liana said. Healthcare is your personal responsibility. And by the way, I'll tell you, uh, the insurance for your healthcare is much, much cheaper than the car insurance. Yeah. I'll tell you, the families, the money they spent on things that are not necessary or not value adding. Look, before the COVID thing came, you know how much money do Kenyans spend on clubs? Is there any friends? I mean, you go to a club and you find people are drinking, they are buying zinas. They are, you drive on Langata Road. Uh, absolutely. So you find cars are there people yes. happy, entertaining each other. Yes. But let me tell you, the moment you're sick, the same friends that you are entertaining with 20,000, 30,000 per night of our weekend, you don't see them. Find those are the people who. Because, look, I mean, if somebody is sick, face it, you're going to use your friends. You know, I'll call Richie, my friend. I mean, Ron is my friend, but Brahma, I'll put it there. Yeah. So you find those friends are giving how much? 500 shillings, 1,000 shillings. You can't blame them because they are 
so much responsibilities with them. You get the point. What I say is a case of people changing their mindset. Yeah. And, and I think realize, the question is asked that, you know, uh, you mean you have so much money, you have one insurance. That is it. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, insurance, yeah? oh, look, we can be there. Insurance is very, very affordable. And you find a guy is not a pro right now. You know, you say that I've never gotten sick for the last 20 years, the last 30 years, I've never been hospitalized. There are majority of people who have, when, when they lose their lives, they're saying I've never been hospitalized for the last 30 years. So there is that mentality that since I've never been hospitalized, then I don't need to go insurance. I don't need to go insurance. But look, I know what to say. Insurance is like a spare tire. True. I mean, yeah. you, you, you have a car, isn't it? You drive in a spare tire. You might never end a puncture. Yeah. For... But the day you do, it is there. <laughs> and it might be in Turkana. So now that's it, the thing. it might be. But that's the thing. Trip no. But you don't have to carry it. Spare tire. No. If you've never been sick, trust me, a day will come. You don't know about tomorrow. Tomorrow you might just be diagnosed with cancer. You might, be di- you might have an accident. Uh, look, bro, somebody has an accident. And uh, you know, I understand where you're going to be taken to. If there is no sign that you have insurance, they take you somewhere. Just the option, just to be there to give a first aid. But if you are taken to a good quality health care facility, you know you have high chances of survival. Yeah, she mentioned yeah. that there's a mental you have got a high chance of survival. Mental wellness. Please. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And then it's not fair that look, a guy is in the sc- on, on the scratcher and, and before you admit it in a big hospital, I mean look, I mean you know, they don't want to take you to an hospital mm-hmm. and they can. Because there is this thing. Would he afford? So you're taken to <laughs> a bad trade or whatever. A small public clinic. And then that time, yeah. these guys, okay, I'm not saying they're not good. They are good. Look, also. But you need also the facility yeah. with the equipment where they are able to diagnose you easily and all this is a problem. They sort you out. All that is because you have never given attention to health care, private health care insurance. All that because you've not. And by the way, I'll tell you what, the cost, the cost, like you really just mentioned just a while ago, yeah. at 1,700 shillings a month. Yeah. How much do people spend? How much do people spend on a weekend? How much do people do in a month? In a month? Could you just save 1,700 or 2,000 to secure your good health care and you have a card? Say that should anything happen, you know, I walk with a card, put it in the pocket on the, on the, on the market. If anything happens, I'm not going to tell you, when the accident happened, majority of the time people go to the wallet. I know they're looking for the next of kin. Yeah. They are looking where, by the way, it could not, it's not just sell the kin. <laughs> they are looking, the good Samaritans, does this guy have medical insurance? Yes. If they find that you have a good quality of insurance, they're talking about obvious too. But if, <laughs> but the because they realize it will be paid for. But the moment they realize <laughs> this guy has gone through his wallet, they have no healthcare card, there's nothing. <laughs> so then you have to decide what to take him. The nearest affordable <laughs> facility. And you might just lose your life. So what I'm telling Kenya is a general seed. Think me a priority. Understand that healthcare. It's your personal responsibility. Exactly. Get a point. Yeah. Get a cover. Twenty thousand. Get. A, by the way, bro. Twenty thousand a month. You can be able to buy a quality healthcare insurance, where you can access the hospital, like I can, Nairobi, Karen. Yeah. Blah blah. Those facilities. I mean, even Avenue. Those facilities have got. Uh, facility. They have got. They have got. Uh, they are well equipped yeah. to yeah. diagnose your time. Those places we have to are give you people. the yes. right yeah. medical attention. Now, this thing you asked me earlier, medical is for the elite. I'm telling you, uh, no, I'm saying, look, even guys down there, you can. Even girls down, people down there, you can afford it. It's not expensive. As a matter of fact, I know so many of my friends who have spent 100,000, 70,000, 80,000 on their car insurance. Even more. But they do not have a health care insurance. So what happens? You rely on human beings, your friends, relatives, to decide yeah. whether you're going to be alive or not. or not. I think it's a case of mindset. It's a good place to take a break because when I come back, I want us to talk about some of the, the options you are, are, are giving people and why you're giving them those kind of options. Thank you, brother. Um, as he said, as we go on break, you know, 
And if you think med, uh, medical insurance is for the elite, then you better know that sicknesses are for everybody. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go away. <laughs>